Are you currently suffering from pain in your Achilles tendon that's exacerbated with exercise? Hey everyone, this is Dr. Zach Rune here, Performance Sport and Spine. In today's video, I'll be discussing Achilles tendon pain, or also known as Achilles tendonitis. The Achilles tendon is the largest tendon in our entire body and attaches the two muscles of our calf, the soleus and the gastrocnemius, to the foot. With Achilles pain, it can happen in one of two spots, at the insertion where the tendon attaches to the bone or the mid portion of the tendon. And this pain is usually sharp and stabby. One cardinal sign of tendon pain is that as you warm up, it should get a little bit better. And if you push it too long, you're gonna have more pain the next morning. With more acute issues, the tendon might swell a little bit as a protective mechanism. And even though this is most commonly seen in runners, it's important to note that it can be seen in both athletic and not athletic populations. If you're suffering from this kind of pain, there's a good chance that you ramped up your activity or you started kind of running in the recent few weeks or months. And again, this is caused by overload of the tissues. The main driver is not inflammation. So if there's more load placed on the tendon than it has the capacity to handle, it will get irritated. In the short term, this does cause irritation to the tendon. But if it goes on long enough, it can cause structural changes and degeneration to the tendon that's harder to fix. And the tendon's a lot more than something that attaches muscles to bone. So as you step down, the tendon kind of compresses like a spring, absorbing energy. And as you step off, it releases that energy to help kind of be more efficient in running, walking, or your gait. And don't forget to like our video, subscribe to our channel, and then click that bell for notifications. With rehab, there's three main goals. Decrease your pain, improve healing of the tendon, and then improve function. And this great flow chart here kind of gives us a way to do that. So we're going to start with double leg calf raises. And if the pain is four to five, we're going to continue with those until it reduces to the point where you can progress. However, if it's too painful, we're going to go back to isometrics and then work on those until the pain reduces. Double leg calf raise. Placing your toes on a small step. Raise both heels up towards the ceiling, feeling tension in your calves. Raise up over two to three seconds and then return to the starting position over two to three seconds. Follow the sets and reps applied. For those of you that have insertional tendinopathy, we want you only go back to neutral. Don't let your ankles dorsiflex as this puts excessive compression on the tendon. The isometric version is to be used if the first option is too painful. So with a small step, you're going to put your toes on it and then just hold your ankles in a non-moving position for the sets and reps applied or hold as long as tolerance and then increase over time. Single leg calf raise. So on the affected side, we're going to put your toes on the step. Raising up slow over two to three seconds, feeling some dental toe tension in your calf. Lower down for two to three seconds. Follow the sets and reps applied. To progress this exercise, simply put on a backpack with some books or hold a weight and then repeat the sets and reps. Now we're gonna go over ballistic loading. So we're gonna help prepare that tendon for rapid loading and unloading such as jumping, sprinting, or cutting. So week one to two is double leg jumping. Week three, the single leg jumping. Week four is double leg stiff jumping, so your knees should not bend. Week five is single leg front to back, and then week six is side to side single leg. And for assessment, we luckily have some good data say for your age and gender, how many reps you should do for your general calf strength. So it's a good idea to test your strength because if you greatly have a discrepancy there, building calf strength is important as well as just tendon strength. Also, when you're doing this, make sure your range of motion is the same on the painful side as the non-painful side and you have less range of motion and you don't want to compensate by leaning forward or to the side instead of raising your calf. Risk factors for this condition are excessive corticosteroid use, metabolic disorders such as diabetes or hypercholesterolemia, genetics, antibiotics, especially fluoroquinolones. This has shown to increase people's chance of Achilles pain from 2 to 15% obesity, and then rheumatoid diseases. Thank you for watching our video on tendon pain or Achilles tendinopathy. It's actually very straightforward and there's a lot of things you can do on your own. So we hope you found it beneficial. If you did, please like our video, subscribe to our channel, and then don't return on notifications.